Every person has a specific game that defines a generation of gaming for them. If you can think of a console or a decade of gaming in general, there's likely a game that stands out to you as the one that defines that period for you. For me, if I think of a Game Boy, my immediate thought is Pokemon, original PlayStation, Final Fantasy VII, late 90s PC gaming, Half-Life, and so on. For every person, their period-defining game may be different, but these are just some of the games that I could look back on and immediately think of, and they really played a huge part in developing me into the epic gamer that I am today. Now, for virtual reality, I can easily say that the period-defining game for early VR to me is Lone Echo. So I have been wanting to make a video about my favorite VR game for a while now, but Echo has already been out for a couple years, there really isn't a huge amount of buzz around it right now, so I put it off until one day I was talking about Echo with a group of friends new to VR, and they had no idea what I was talking about. Like what? So here I am now, doing my civic duty. And if you don't know what Lone Echo is, it's a story-driven VR game that takes place in the future, 2126 to be exact. You are an android named Jack, stationed on a space mining station orbiting Saturn. You have some casual talk about your captain, Olivia, leaving soon to take a different command position, and you'll be the sole crew member operating the mining facility. You seem to have a very close relationship with Olivia, as her expecting departure seems to carry somewhat of a sad aura around it. You're partaking in normal duties when something terrifying happens. Space and time is ripped apart right in front of you as a space anomaly appears, as well as a giant unknown ship. Your space station takes massive damage, and your body is destroyed in the event. You wake up in a new body to find your partner missing, your station nearly destroyed, and you have to investigate what has taken place here as well as find Olivia. Pretty quickly, you figure out that things aren't quite right, however. There is some sort of parasitic biomass all over the place that happens to feed off the very energy that you personally need to survive, that being any sort of electrical current. But that's not all. You find out that the anomaly you just witnessed seconds earlier took place 400 years ago. You then go on a search for Olivia because you see very obvious signs that she is still alive, but things look bleak as you search the ship from the future. Not only is the ship from the future infected with parasites as well as its crew, but you find out that this ship carries the same logo as the company that you work for currently. This biomass happens to be the products of a giant war that is waging currently and well I'll just say it gets crazier and crazier from here. No more spoilers, really you didn't get anything spoiled there, that's all in the trailer. This whole game plays out like a 7 hour long Star Trek episode and it's good. So what's actually so good about it? Well I usually talk very positively about VR in general and games on this channel. I'm normally convincing people about how good things can be and let's be totally real and honest here, those really good games are kind of far and few. If you want a narrative-based VR game that really immerses you, has good writing, looks good, has a decent runtime, there aren't many options. But that's what makes Lone Echo so impressive to me. It looks beautiful. I mean, come on, this game was released in 2017 and it's still one of the best looking VR games out there. The controls are still some of the best I've personally used in VR. You get away from a lot of the problems locomotion can present in VR by using thrusters in your arms in very intuitive ways. Plus, you have a full body avatar that interacts with the environment. If you're flying towards a wall, you will bounce off of it. Your hands don't go through objects, and just like you would be able to do in Zero-G, you can grab railings or walls and push off of them. The atmosphere is just set up so well. The visuals mixed with the controls as well as the environment are just so good. The ships that you are traversing within are, well, ships built for Zero-G. So they have handrails and places that you can stick to just like you would in real life, which makes everything seem like it's supposed to be there. There are very few gameplay mechanics that are so in your face that immersion is broken, which I can appreciate. And story. So there are plenty of games that have good controls or look beautiful, but a game with a good long running story that grips you is especially rare in VR. I have personally played this game three, almost four times now, and two of those were in one play session. Yeah, that's right, this is a 51 gigabyte, nearly eight hour recording of me playing through this game all the way through. If you go in with the right mindset, this game can be immersive as hell. Now, I do know that there are people that have a hard time actually getting into this game. The story starts off pretty slow, and if you have zero interest in sci-fi, or you just don't like the storyline, I completely understand 
understand. But there's a reason why I'm making this video and talking highly about it. It's because it's the best game that I have ever played in VR, and it's had a monstrous effect on me. By the way, I should also mention a negative, kind of a big negative, it's an Oculus exclusive. Now that doesn't mean that you can't play it if you don't have an Oculus headset. This is one game that Revive actually works pretty well, at least right now at this current state. So even if you don't have Oculus, you could still play it, it's no big deal. But if you do want to pass on it because it's an exclusive, I also understand that. But you also have to understand just a little bit that a game like this possibly could never have existed if it weren't for being an exclusive. A game like this that probably took a year or two to develop and has this fidelity of graphics and gameplay probably wasn't cheap to make and it seems like Oculus kind of made that happen for them. But it's hard for me to harp on it too hard because honestly this channel may have never even happened if Lone Echo wasn't released. Because back in 2017 when I first played this game, Echo is the game that hooked me. It made me see what VR is and what it can be. I mean Job Simulator and Pavlov are great games, but what did it for me was this. Playing through it really gave me that oh my god this is amazing sort of moment. And I could honestly owe a lot of my passion for VR to this game. So yeah, if it sounds like I'm kind of sucking this game off a little bit, I'll be honest, I, I am. I mean, I know I am absolutely talking from a biased perspective here, but the experiences I've had within the game is what created that bias. I've played almost all the big VR games out there, and this one just left a big impression on me. I know it's not completely perfect, but it's still my favorite. Also, I feel like I failed to mention the fullness of the Echo franchise. There's straight up competitive of multiplayer with an esports scene at that. Echo Arena is a free add-on that is 3v3 frisbee soccer or maybe something more like Blitzball. It's got a huge skill ceiling, a dedicated multiplayer following, and it's kind of cool because it's a legit esport, like it's a sport that you play physically in a game. But the multiplayer mode I enjoy most is Echo Combat, sort of an Overwatch style multiplayer mode with abilities, different loadouts, objective based and payload based modes. You could be a healer, DPS, tank, snipe, flank, whatever you want to do. It's all got good depth and it's a blast, especially because I love Overwatch anyways and this scratches that TF2 slash Overwatch itch in VR. Mixed with the movements of Echo, it's for sure my go-to for competitive multiplayer games. By the way, in case you're already typing out a comment about how I just shield out for the devs of Lone Echo, I have never even had a conversation with Ready at Dawn, let alone ever having an incentive for making a video like this other than just sharing a game that I love. This game has had a massive influence on me in terms of enjoying VR, so I figured I'd share. Especially if you're new to VR and you're looking for a game to play, sure it's got its downsides. Like the story being slow to start off, oh and the price, it is 40 bucks. I personally have gotten my value out of that price between playing it multiple times and the free online multiplayer in Arena. The combat version does cost an extra 10 bucks, so I could understand you being wary of a pricey VR game, but it was worth it for me. As well as it being an exclusive, I understand that that turns a lot of people off, but if you're willing to try it out. I really think that you'll enjoy it. And like I said, it does work with Revive well. This footage right here is me playing on my index. So if you already tried the game or try it because of this video, let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, Thrill out.